is familiar with rock? Well, okay, I, who is not familiar with rock? That's gonna be a bit easier. Yeah, okay, so um, you have no idea. You're just like, oh, the well, Rolex framework, let's get in and now it's just to know a little bit the audience. Um, do you have any idea of like RTT, what it is, RTTS? Well, that's already a pretty good starting point. Um, at least for my talk, it's gonna be enough, I think. Enough a priori knowledge. Uh, so um, I'm gonna present work I've done, actually I've done in Brazil, so in that case, yes. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I'm currently with the Brazilian Institute of Robotics, which is a new institute that got created in uh, Salvador, Bahia, so in the north of Brazil. And the work I've presented here is actually mostly not my work, so I've, I've been helping, but uh, it's the work of Tomio and Gustavo, uh, which are employees at the beer. Um, so it's how did we integrate Gazebo and ROC? Um, ROC already had a simulation engine, which is uh, Mars. Um, which is developed by DFKI, but at Beer we had the feeling that we wanted to at least have the option of using Gazebo, uh, given that, I mean, it is the de facto simulation engine for robots. Um, it's actually pretty well designed, at least that's my opinion. And it got really a load of funding the last year, so there's big progression and um, there's really features that you find only in Gazebo. Um, so that would be for the why, um, the how, I'm actually gonna talk about it. Um, so why, yes. Um, okay, so the, the integration was really, um, how do we, well, like what was the general concept? Um, when you integrate a simulation engine in, in your robotic framework, what we have in ROC is the tendency to have um, a run script or something that spawns everything, including the simulations. That's how mass is deployed currently, which means that you actually have this tie-in between your simulation system, runtime, and the runtime of your robot software. So if you actually kill your robot software, you also kill your simulation system, which is not the nicest. Um, you can do it differently, but that's actually mostly how it works. That was one of the big changes we brought in with the Gazebo integration. We wanted to have a permanent world. So you, you run your simulation, it's running, and then you start and stop and do whatever you want with your, your robot software. That um, if you crash into something and you want to reboot your simulation software to get the robot out, um, well, you can. So it's really like the world, simulated world is permanent. Um, the other thing was to have a no configuration needed integration. So really something where you start Gazebo, um, you don't, you, you write an SDF file uh, which describes your world, describes your sensors, describes your robots. Um, what we wanted is to not have to add more to that so that you can actually um, talk to Gazebo from Rock. So um, that's actually a, a, a big contrast. We, we looked on how ROS is integrating uh, Gazebo, and that's a big contrast with ROS, because ROS, there's a lot of ROS specific tags. You end up having a new SDF file when you want to integrate with ROS. Um, so how did it work? Um, well, first of all, um, like the design philosophy in, in ROC is always to put as much functionality as possible independent of our tool chain. So every plugin we need, so we want to simulate AUV, so we have actually, we developed a plugin for buoyancy, we developed a plugin for thrusters, we developed these kind of things. They're purely Gazebo plugins, they have no relationship with the tool chain. Um, and then you have your SDF file, as I said, unmodified, um, you just declare your Gazebo plugins in it. And um, then you feed that to Gazebo, and the only thing you need to add is to load what Gazebo calls a system plugin, uh, which is the raw Gazebo system plugin and gets called back for every object you have in your scene. So every model, every sensor, every blah, blah, blah. And what that plugin does is uh, look at a mapping between the object in the SDF file and uh, the corresponding rock tasks, rock components that is supposed to export that object while well, allow interaction from rock to that object. So it's basically spawning these. Um, each component, the naming of each component is normalized from the SDF name, so it's basically the, like the full path of the SDF object. If you have a world called W and a model called Flatfish, then it's gonna be W Flatfish, these kind of things. 
Um, so when you start, when you've started Gazebo, you end up with a bunch of rock components that are all non running. So you're not wasting resources. Um, and if you actually want to interact with that particular object from a particular object in the, um, in the scene, then you have to configure and start that component. That's the same mechanism you would do if you want to configure a camera plugin. So a camera sensor in the simulated world, you would have actually properties on the camera task. You set these properties, you configure, you start your components. It's that, that there you're really in the standard rock, rock workflow. And then from there, um, obviously you interact with a bunch of rock components. That's the goal in the end. Um, but also, uh, we started developing some sensors that are based on Viscous 3D. I'm going to tell a bit more about that. And you can use Viscous 3D or Viscous in general to visualize your world. Here, it's really a matter of technology. So Gazebo is using Augur for 3D rendering. Um, Rock is using OpenSync Graph. So we have actually a lot of visualizations for sensors, for for, for that kind of stuff that are developed in OpenSync Graph. Plus, um, everything new is going to be developed in OpenSync Graph as well. So if you develop a new component, you want to visualize its state, you're going to use op like OpenSync Graph if you want it in a 3D scene. So we actually had to move away from, like really not use, we couldn't reuse the, the Augur visualization, so the, the Gazebo visualization. So here we actually went for, okay, how can we bind that to this kit? Um, the sensors is because, well, actually, it's one big requirement. Um, we need it. I'm doing underwater stuff, and this is getting, oops, sorry. I'm doing underwater stuff, and there is a um, plugin called OSG Ocean for OSG. Um, OSG is open scene graph for those that don't know it. So if we actually want to simulate a camera, we actually would do it in OSG, obviously. So basically the choice we had was either we do a mechanism to have these Q3 sensors or we redevelop completely something that mimics, visually mimics the water in Augur. So since we actually needed this Q3 integration anyways, we just went for doing that route. Um, and okay, finally rock components, obviously. Um, the side effect of starting to use Gazebo, um, is that we started to use SDF as well. So here again, also a technical choice. Um, there was the choice of basically there's URDF and SDF to describe robots and describe scenes and describe worlds and whatever. I have no idea what happened on the Ross Gazebo side about that, but what I know is that Ross is mostly using URDF and Gazebo is mostly using SDF. I also know that SDF can load URDF, which actually is a feature that points to SDF. The, the, the um, design constraint for us was not having two different formats. And if you look at how the thing works in ROS, it's quite a bit like force fed. So like, mm. um, so we went for, we went for, okay, let's standardize on SDF. Let's, let's see what happens if we say we just use SDF. So far it's working great. Um, there's actually very little in ROG that is really dependent on URDF. Most things are dependent on KDL. So they, they build a KDL like kinematics representation from the KDL library from a URDF file and then forget about the URDF file. So there's very little of the actual hardcore code, code that depends on URDF. Um, they just depend on something that can load a, you add, load a file and create a KDL structure. Um, so that's basically what we implemented which was not that much work, it's probably one day or two of work. Um, and then we basically started to get um, what we needed. So robot visualization is a Visky 3D plugin. You feed him URDF and now SDF and you get your whole robot represented. You can give him joint states and he's moving the robot around. RoboVis is just a common line for robot visualization. Rock transformer is something that allows you to look at your transformations. And robot frames, it's pending, so we are, we are integrating SDF in that. Uh, but mostly everything where you could use URDF and even more, because there's some stuff that couldn't use URDF before, um, it can now use SDF. Um, um, and then for those that are interested in SysKit, um, there's basically like to, to use Gazebo, you need two or three lines. You point to your world file and then you get um, Gazebo integrated in SysKit. 
Um, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, um, I'm, I'm just gonna have a quick look. Um, what? Ah, okay. Yeah, it was there, but since I'm in <coughs> split, um, um, how it looks like? Well, actually, there's not much. It, it, it's the funny part with these integrations. There's rarely anything that you need to see. Um, uh, okay, uh, I know it's here. So um, here I have a um, GZ server. So it's a Gazebo headless. Ah, uh, yeah, that was actually one thing about using Gazebo in the first place. Gazebo for the last more than 10 years, this time it's actually more than 10 years, um, is headless. So you can run Gazebo without a graphical interface. It's designed like that. It's been designed like that since at least Gazebo 0.4, because I used Gazebo 0.4. It's really a simulation server. Um, and which happens to have a visualization and not a whole package where you have to rip off the visualization if you don't want it. Um, so uh, like here, below, behind the scenes, you have to trust me on that, there is a um, gazebo running. That's the result on the uh, rock tasks. So you have like three tasks. There's one that represents just the world. So it's gonna give you the time, for instance, the simulation times kind of things. And then there's two, one for each model uh, in your scene. So one is the simple arm that you can see up there, and one is just uh, an asphalt plane. So there is an asphalt plane, <laughs> just so that the arm doesn't fall. Um, that's the raw gazebo Vs. So it's basically the VSKID 3D visualization of the gazebo world. Um, we want to add more to it. So typically, like the ability to start and stop the simulation, these kind of things. Um, here you can see, like, as you know, VSKID 3D, uh, and I should have taken a mouse, touch pads are not very nice. Um, so there's one robot visualization Visco3D plugin. It's fed the SDF from Gazebo um, and it's building the representation. And on the top there's Rock RoboVis. So it's a generic um, rock tool to control a robot like joint positions. Um, it's the same thing, you give it the, the SDF file and then it's just talking to Gazebo for you. Um, and just to show that it works, um, well, that it works with a bug. Uh, if I move, actually, the other one moves. Uh, I say with a bug because for whatever reason, this one doesn't get updated. I have no idea why. Um, but um, you can see that, I mean, you change the joints and magic visualization changes. I, I hate these demos because it looks so stupid. It takes, it takes a f really load of work to get it working and then the demo looks really dumb. Um, okay. Um,
Well, the vehicle, like... of the control loops, this kind of stuff. Um, so, like, uh, which, yeah, we have the vehicle in the water, so we can simulate the vehicle in the water, the pressure forces on it, it's reacting as it should. Um, the models are still simple, so as I said, for instance, thrusters, uh, if you start having a lot of forward movement, then the thruster won't, won't, will react a lot, it would be a lot more responsive in gazebo than it should be, um, because of I mean, you, we don't have current. Well, actually, we do have current. It's not dynamic, but you can add current. Um, and so on and so forth. But the vehicle is in the water. Yeah. It's pretty far. But the code is on BS, BS, BS GitHub accounts. And, and I assume that you also use Trendbot for the drivers and controllers and so forth? Yeah. 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 How is that then interchangeable? Can I just say, here's my Uh, well, it's, I mean, standard data stream. So, thrusters, you control them with a joint state struct. So, normally, like if you design it using standard types, um, it's just it's just rock tasks. So, it, it depends on the question. Well, it depends on the types you're using, but that always is the case. And, uh, but we're only using standard rock types. So, if you design your system using standard rock types, which you should, um, if you build components, um, then it's just going to be like this plugin. Um, But at least the models are synchronous. It's triggered by the um, 
there's one event in Gazebo, a synchronous event that tells you where I'm, I'm at the beginning or I'm at the end of my update cycle. Um, and they're all synchronous. So you get exactly the state in a simulation where the timestamp tells you you are. It's, it's completely, it's exact. How do you um, uh, sort of combine the, the Gazebo process with the, uh, are these origin processes? Or uh, origin tasks. They're tasks. But they're still just classes, you know. So this guy here is basically just creating a class 